I'm going to tell you about God's little acre. Fare you well, fare you well. Seeds of love are planted on God's little acre. Fare you well, fare you well. Oh, the men, they worked and they prayed to their maker. Fare you well, fare you well. In a crop of gold, they would be partaker. Fare you well, fare you well. Digging in the moonlight. Digging in the dark. Trouble don't pay no mind. Very well, very well. Everybody got another kind. Very well, very well. Digging in the moonlight, digging in the sun, digging in the ground till the digging was done. Come over to God's little acre. Come over to God's little acre. Come over to God's little acre. break loose up there just when we're getting deep. Ain't that something? Hey, Paul. I'm getting kind of tired of digging this hole. Can't we start a new one? What for? What do you mean, what for? We've been digging in this one for two months already, Pa. We ain't struck nothing yet but a lot of hard work. Son, I've been digging in this land close to 15 years, and I'm aiming to dig 15 more if need be. Trouble with you, boys, is you ain't found the patience that I got. <laughs> you don't need no patience. What we need is a diviner. There you go again, talking superstition. All you talk about is diviners and conjures and stuff like that. Son, that ain't thing to worry about superstition. Now, you take me. I'm scientific. <laughs> You're so scientific, Pa. Why don't you get us a digging machine, Pa, and get the job done? I ain't gonna buy nothing that costs money. I can't afford it. Where are you going, son? Oh, I'm quitting for today, Pa. I'm gonna wash up and go to town. Never get rich that way. Well, Pa, I don't... I don't aim to get rich. I'm too young. I'm worried about that, boy. Go see in town. Oh, he ain't particular. Anything with skirts on. He ain't used to women yet. They can do him harm. He won't know about it till it's too late to stop the clock. Hey, I brought you men some nice cool lemonade. <laughs> Why, I thank you, daughter-in-law. <laughs> Which cup for dinner, honey? Same as yesterday, bud. Bacon fat and grits. I'd like me some fried chicken. But a man has a wife like Griselda. I don't know how he can keep his mind on food all the time. <laughs> now quit your teasing, Ty Ty. If the good Lord seen fit to put a beauty like you in our house, I'm going to take my fill of looking well I can. <laughs> Son, you don't know how lucky you are. How am I lucky? Because I got a wife who don't love me? What you two lovebirds got to argue about? I never argue with Buck. No, she hardly talks to me anymore. Too busy daydreaming about Will Thompson. If you'd quit throwing his name up to me, maybe I'd get a chance to forget him. All Will has to do is snap his fingers and you go running. You keep on this way, Buck, and you wake up some fine morning all by your lonesome. You don't mean that, Griselda. You tell Buck you don't mean that. 
You tell him I don't want to hear him mention Will Thompson again. <laughs> sure don't know how to talk to a woman. Uh, 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 Sally ain't just another woman. She seemed fit to marry you. And you think that's all you had to do to keep her happy forever? I know who the trouble is. She's still thinking of Will. Coming here nearly a year, and you seen me digging, and you didn't know what I was digging for. I figured you're looking for water. Water? Pluto, you you think I'm gonna clean out of my head? I'm digging for gold. Gold in the state of Georgia? Bright yellow gold. Gold coins as big around as a biscuit. Thousands of them. Is that a fact? Yeah, gold spoons, gold plates, gold forks, and, and gold thunder mugs, as you'd be surprised. You seen them for a fact? O almost. Where? Don't know exactly. I ain't finding it, but they're there. They're there. Grandpa told me about it. He will determine the very day he died. Well, maybe he might have been mistaken. What's Making my dead grandpa out to be a liar. No, no, I wouldn't do nothing like There's that. There's anything in the world I can't stand. It's a liar. You gotta admit you ain't found no gold yet. What you folks need is an albino to help you out. Why they tell me a man ain't got much chance of a snowball in hell? Why the albino to help him find something? What? A uh, albino. What in the blue perfect hell is that, Pluto? Why is one of these all white men? Looks like they're made out of chalk. White as cotton. Got white hair, white skin, white eyeballs even. You fellas need one. Need them bad. No, Pluto. I'm scientific all the way through. I wouldn't have nothing to do with conjure. But I ain't talking about no conjure, Ty Ty. I'm talking about an albino. Why, they got a secret power. They can see right through the ground. Like was glass of water. 
Strictly scientific. Convinced. You got me convinced? Where's he at? Well, where do you expect him to be? Down by the swamp. Well, let's go. Come on. For real, honest to God, Albino. It's real as the day is long. You think we could catch him? Don't you worry none about that. We can't hold him and let a plow have him do the trick. Hey, now don't forget, this Albino is a citizen and a voter. You tie him up. Be sure you don't do nothing to break the law. But if you do, mention me out, because there's a future sheriff of this county. Guess how big a man is he? Well, it's not how big he is that counts. It's the whiteness of him. His blood is white. The wax in his ears is white. By God, I'm going to get that old white man if I have to bust the gut getting there. Buck, you get on up to the house. Fix up the automobile for a little trip. Make sure the tires are stuck up hot and tight. If we're plenty of water in the ring, it's gonna be 10, 12 hours before we get back. Yes, sir! Yeah! I'm sure great for you for that scientific suggestion about the other one. You know, I'm mighty tired of taking this weather like this. I sure am grateful you came by here today, Pluto. Yes, sir! You open my eyes to where I've been missing an albino to show me exactly where that gold was buried. White hair boy can do it, can't he? Just like you said? Well, sure he can. Albino, I reckon, can find most anything. Well, he might just walk right out and into that field right there. Look right down through the ground and see where all that gold is buried. Right there? Anywhere. I married. I promised this piece of land to the Holiness Church. Everything that grows here, they can have. Cotton, or corn, or anything else. Well, if that ground's so sacred, what'd you take the cross out for? Because it just occurred to me, Pluto. I never had gone dug a home God's little acre, not in all these years. But suppose, like you said, that albino walks out on my farm and points to that land there. Suppose the gold's buried right in that lot, been there all the time. I'd be compelled by my conscience to give all that gold away to the preacher. Or worse yet, maybe I wouldn't give him nothing. You never can tell. I'm a religious man, but I wouldn't stand for that. What are you going to do with it? I'm going to move God's little acre. The spot where it don't stand out in the open is a sin and a temptation. God, please forgive me. I, I had to move your little lake. Just had to. Put myself out of temptation. If I'd found gold way up there, I'd uh, been sorely tempted not to turn it over to you. You wouldn't want me in temptation, I know that. I don't mean to cheat you none. Oh, no, I don't. You can have anything that grows on this piece of ground. Flowers or honey or anything else. 
Daughter-in-law, is that watermelon cool and ripe and ready to eat? <laughs> Show is far. I'll go in the house and get some of that nice, cool watermelon. Come on, Pluto. I can't, Ty Ty. There's a whole mess of votes between here and the crossroads. I just got to get them planted before sundown. You're going to kill yourself running for sheriff, Pluto. It ain't worth it. Come on. <laughs> Ty Ty, there's something I want to talk to you about been pressing on my mind. Just what did you want to talk to me about, Pluto? Well, it's, it's about your girl, sir. Which one? I got three. All beautiful. The glory of the world. Oh, I agree to that, sir. <laughs> Pluto's with you, know something? Your eyes look just like watermelon seeds. No, it's so. <laughs> can't help it, Mr. Swift. Your eyes are so small and your face is so red that you do, you look exactly like a watermelon with two seeds showing. <laughs> <laughs> now, Pluto, about my girl. Ben Rosewood. She lives in Peachtree Valley. It's too far away to do you any good. And she's married besides to Will Thompson. Then there's Griselda. Of course, she's married, too. But I sometimes wonder if Buck is a right and proper husband for a girl as beautiful as Griselda. Even if he is my own flesh and blood. So, that leaves my baby, dying in jail. <laughs> but she's too young to go court. I, I don't want to court her. I, I want to marry her. You would, Pluto? You mean it? I'd cut off my right arm to marry her. You taking a liking to it, Pluto? I sure to God have, and that's a fact. Only there's one, one thing kind of bothers me. What's that? Well, I heard she she been teasing and fooling around with a lot of men. I, I heard. Why I'm tickled to death to hear that. Darling Jill is a baby of the family, and she's grown up at last. She sure has. It's a pity God can't make a woman like Darling Jill and leave off before it goes too far. He, he just didn't know when he made enough of a good thing. He just kept on and on. Now, look at her. Pay no mind, Pluto. Don't you like to tease something? That's only natural. The way I see it, woman's got to tease something before they settle down to bed and babies. It's a lot better they do it now than they have to get married. She'll change, Pluto. And it's up to you to satisfy her and make her so happy that she'll leave off with everybody but you. Hey, Pa, you know the car's all ready. So why don't we just go, Pa? We're waiting for Darling Jill. <laughs> oh, pa, Darling Jill won't get back till she rides old Pluto's truck in some ditch. Oh. Mm. It's 12 hours to that swamp and back. And what I'd like to do is get that albino and get back here so I can go to town. Son. I'm mighty proud to hear you say you want to be up and doing. Too many people in this world just want to sit around their butts and wait for the corn to grow. Well, not me and not my son. We're in a hurry to get rich. Get in the car, Sean. Pluto, I want to ask you a favor. Well, I can't do no favors without my car. Don Jill's going to bring your car back. You know that. And when she does, I want you to drive her to Peach Street Valley. What about me, Pa? I want to go, too. I don't want to hang around here everlastingly waiting for something to happen. You stay here. I'll go if I please to go. 
Can't wait to see Will again, can you? What did I just get through telling you, bud? She goes to see Will Thompson over my dead body. I want you to stay here, Griselle, and cook us a mess of food. And wait for us to come back. You tell Don Jill to go to Peachtree Valley and get Rosalind, her husband, Will, and come back to the farm where she was born. I want my whole family together when we turn that albino loose and locate my grandpa's gold and, and make us all rich again. Will you help me, Pluto? I reckon I can if you'll let me be your son-in-law. That ain't up to me, Pluto. That ain't even up to darling Jill. That's up to you. Get your car going, Buck. I'm not going until she promises to stay here. I'm not promising anything. Now, Buck, why don't you use your charm and ask her nice like? Ask her. It won't hurt you. I'm asking you to stay, Griselda. You asking me or telling me? He's asking you. Let him say it. I'm asking you, Griselda. All right. I'll stay. Let's go, Paul. Don't forget to tell darling Joe what I told you. Well, what do I have to do that for, Dawn Jill? Because I say so, you big horse head. All right. Now, come straight ahead.
in jail, I don't even know what I'm doing here. This ain't even the right state for me to get elected in, let alone the right county. And it's hot. Now, Don Jeff. Oh, now, Don Jeff. No, no, Don Jeff. Don't, don't, no. Now, Don Jeff. Don Jeff, listen. That's no place to keep keys. Now, listen to me, will you please? Don Jeff. I'm here, Will, anyway. Good, let's go home. I'll count some votes. Well, Will's the kind of man. If he's anywhere around, you sure take notice of him. Come on, come on. Jim, I wasn't expecting you. I... <laughs> oh. Oh. What's wrong? <laughs> Clancy Kidd. I thought I was going to die. <clears throat> must have been out of my head a little. What did Will do to you? Where is he? Oh. <laughs> Hello, Pluto. I sure am glad to see you, too. <laughs> yeah, let me take your clothes off this chair. You can sit down and make yourself to home. Oh, I, I've got to go right home. That's a fact. Shut up and sit down. Now, Rosamond, tell me what happened. You can talk in front of Pluto, big horse head. Now, where's Will? Well, he, he's been drunk all week. He, he drinks whenever he can. I, I, I wouldn't mind that so much. It, it's just that he won't stay home with me no more. Sleeps all day and goes out at night. Oh, it ain't his fault. It's the mill. It's, it's been closed down now for six months. He, he's got nothing in the world to do. Well, ain't it ever going to open again? I reckon not. Uh, they say it don't pay a dividend no more. It's bankrupt. This whole town is bankrupt. We ought to all just pack up and move away right now. All of us. But we don't. Everybody looks up to Will. And he won't move. He, he says he's going to open the mill again somehow. Only he don't know how. Well, I'm glad I came. Paul wants you and Will to come home and help him dig. He's got a sure way to find Grandpa's gold this time. <laughs> oh, darling, Chip, there ain't no gold on that place. If there was, don't you think they'd have found it long before now? <laughs> Why can't Paul quit digging that land full of holes and, and try to raise corn or cotton or peanuts like everybody else does? Well, I don't know about that, but, but Paul wants you and Will to come home, Rosamond. Will? Will won't dig on no farm. He's not a farm boy. Paul will know that by this time. Besides, sir. I don't even know if Will's coming home tonight. Well, then we'll just sit here and wait for him. We'll spend the night. That's a mighty fine idea. We'll spend the night. Not quite so fine as all that. I'm going to sleep here on the bed with Roseman, and you can make yourself a pallet on the floor. Oh. Darling Jill, you here. Stand up. Let me look at you in the light. <laughs> well, well, the baby's a full-grown woman. Plump as a peach on a branch, and ripe and ready to pluck. Will, don't take on that way. We got company. Pluto! How you doing, man? Looking bigger and better than ever. Uh, how are you, Mr. Thompson? Uh, you sure look like every little thing just fine with you. Well, uh, it ain't. Oh, oh, oh. 
Where are you going? Trying to slip away, were you? Now, ain't that a sneaky thing to do? Come back here, all of you, and keep me company. How's Grizel? She's still married. You know, Pluto? I bought Grizel the first pair of high heel shoes she ever wore. Well, the bed's made. Why don't you go to sleep? Hmm? When Griselda was working in the mill and she walked around in them high heel shoes, there wasn't a man got a full day's work done. Well, please don't talk about it now. A girl, Griselda Pluto, we almost got married. Well, she wanted me to go root and grub on the farm. I wouldn't do it. I'm a town boy. I got to be where I can hear a factory whistle blow three times a day. Watch those crowds of girls come running out of the company gate, laughing and screaming, raising cane, faces like like flowers. Will, you got to realize something once and for all. That mill ain't never going to open again. And Griselda's married. Can't do nothing about it. Come on, get to bed. Come on. Come on. What's done is done. Now go to sleep. I can't sleep. Well, you can rest. Turn out the light so it won't hurt your eyes. people. What they come for? Just, just for a visit. They ain't come to take you away, have they, Will? I promise you I wouldn't leave Beastry Valley until they start the cotton mill again, didn't I? Yeah, well, I know it's easy for you and Rosemont to pull up today. You got used to you. Most of us got big families. We ain't got the money to move and find jobs and houses somewhere else. You don't have to tell me, Harry. I know, Will, but you got a little worried while we all right, all right, all right. He ain't going to leave us, boy. He's going to stay right in town, like he said. Again. I want to get in. Why are you always coming here for? I want to get in. There ain't nothing here but a closed down cotton mill. Now, what are you looking for? You know what I'm looking for, Claude. I'm looking for the day when the light shines through all those windows. That yes. day's gone, Will. The mill ain't never going to open up again. The spindles are still threaded. The power's still connected. All it takes is for somebody to pull a switch off. That's crazy talk, Will. Now, why don't you go home before your wife has to come looking for you again? Don't tell me what to do. I know what I have to do. What do you say you go down to Ned's bar and get yourself a drink? Here, have it on me.
Felix. Yes, sir. How's my albino? <laughs> He's sleeping like a baby, Mr. Ty Ty. Morning, Dave. You sleep well? Where am I? You with friends. We went to a lot of fuss and bother to get you. Sure hope that you appreciate it. I'm hungry. You get your breakfast in due time, but first, you got work to do. What kind of work? It's easy. I'll show you. You take this, this willow fork, and you hold it like, like that, till she pulls you down. Scientifically speaking, right down to where the gold is surely located. Gold? Are you looking for gold? Why do you think we come clean down to Swamp Corners to let us sue you? I still don't know. You're a genuine albino, ain't you? Yeah, I reckon I am. What would I be doing with an albino except to find gold? I ain't gonna do it. Why not, son? Because I don't know how. You don't know how? You're a genuine empire, and you don't... Leave him go, go Mr. Titan. Let, let him loose, Mr. Titan. Now, you listen to me, son. If you don't know how to define gold, you better start learning right now. All these nice folks are going to be pretty mad at you, and we won't get no vittles this winter. But I just can't. I can't. I'm sorry I got angry, son. But I... I've been digging for gold for 15 years. And I ain't gonna give up. I, I, I don't know what to do. Well, it's easy now. I'll show you. See? You take this willow stick. That's it. Turn your wrists up. That's right. Put it out in front of you. You can do it! You can do it! Open the barn door! Get the boy room!
good. Come on. Follow it, boy. Follow it. Maybe, Mr. Tai Tai, you'll stop digging and start farming. No. No. Now, wait a minute. Hey! How do I know, bad luck? This is still God's lake, ain't it? And so's the gold. No, but no. I can't honestly say it is. A minute before Dave found the gold, something come over me. And I decided to change the location of God's little acre. Just about in time, I reckon. Where's it now, Paul? Lord ain't told me yet. Well, tell him to hurry. How about don't you talk like that? Good Lord and your pa. We're old fashioned. We got to take our time. God. I don't mean to cheat you now. I swear I don't. But what with this unseasonable weather and all, I believe you'd admire to have your ache in a cooler spot. If you don't like this, you don't approve of what I'm doing, Lord. And strike me down dead right here where I stand. Are we home? Mm -hmm. No, but we ain't but a mile away. <laughs> what are we stopping for? Don Jill, I just gotta have an answer. Take the pins out of my hair. Will you? Oh, God almighty, Don Jill. I just gotta know. Can't hear nothing. I don't know if I'm ready to get married to anybody yet, Pluto. Least of all, you. You don't have to be ready. I'm ready. I'm ready enough for both of us. I'll marry you anytime, daytime, nighttime, all the time. I'm so crazy about you. That's a fact. Your belly's too big. Oh, Don Jill, you know, one little thing like that come between us. Now, Pluto, if your belly weren't so big, you couldn't be sheriff. And if you weren't going to be sheriff, I don't know if I'd even look at you. And that's a fact. 
Oh, gee, you hadn't ought to tease me like that. I mean, just because I'm so crazy in love with you, I can't hardly see nothing else. There's no reason that someday I just don't get so riled up and so provoked that I, I just don't take my two hands and, and just... And what, what, what would you do? Turn your heart. <laughs> turn your heart. You scared the tar out of me. For a minute, I thought you was going to darn your socks again. <laughs> I'll turn your heart. Doing absolutely nothing, boys. Absolutely nothing. Same old linthead. Same old linthead. What Will needs, Rosamond, is to occupy himself with something useful. You know, Will, there's nothing better for a man's body and spirit than digging down in God's good earth. Rosamond, you go in the house and help Griselda warm up the eats. Well, poor Pluto here, he's he's just about starving. Oh, I sure am. And, and that's a fact. Well, come on into the house, Pluto. You know, nothing makes a man hungrier than having his whole family around him. Ma, that sure is a tremendous hole you dug. What's that? Can it vote? That? Why, that's that old white man you put me on. Great guns, Pluto! That's the albino we roped in the swamp. Did it divine for you? Just like four and four makes eight. <laughs> now you go in the house with Rosamond. Ty, right, Ty, this is absolutely crazy. You're digging right beside the house, it's gonna topple over into that hole. It won't fall down. We kind of prop it up as we go along. It does fall down, it won't matter much. We strike gold, we'll be rich enough to build a house three times this size. What are you looking at, Don Gil? Well, I'm looking to see that albino man. I've never seen one before in my life. My daughter, he's just the same as you and me. Can he talk? <laughs> he talk you, I'm off to give him half a chance. I want to see him just once. Call him up here. I don't even have nobody fool with him. Just walk off and call crows if that's what you got in mind. He's got to stay in a job for me all the time. Now you come on into the house. Well, I'm coming, Paul. Hello there, albino fella. My name's Dave Dawson. I am pleased to meet you. They sure didn't tell any lies about your color. You're white. That's for sure. Mm. It's a pretty color, too. I like it. Thank you, ma'am. The first kind words I've heard. 
Your pop kidnapped me with a string of lies and a leather plow line. Now that I got such a good look at you, wouldn't you like to come up here and get a good look at me? I don't mind. What do you say? Well, you're beautiful. <laughs> Won't you come on up here and say that again? <laughs> now don't get him shy and scared, Miss Darling Jill. He might run away. I don't feel like chasing after him with my shotgun. Oh, he won't run away, Uncle Felix. I promise you that. Come on, Dad. Come on. Besides, we're only going to go out and watch the moon rise over the pond. Come on, Dad. Come on, boy. Oh. <laughs> don't you like me? Oh, God, gosh almighty, I... I, I just didn't know there was a girl a, a, as pretty as you in, in the whole country. I mean, I mean, you're the, you're the prettiest girl I've ever seen. And, uh, oh, and, and, and you're so soft. And, and you talk like a bird song. And, and uh, yeah, you smell good, too. <laughs> oh, I just love the way you talk. Talk to me some more, would you? Uh, what do you want me to say? How come you're so white all over? Well, I don't, I don't know. Some, some people say it's because I was made in the white of the moon. <laughs> oh, I just think you're wonderful looking. I'm glad you're so different. I get so tired of the same looking people every day of my life. Would you like to kiss me? Oh, well. Uh... Well, yeah, I, I would if you let me. I reckon I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> Will you marry me? Oh, and I only said you could kiss me once. Oh, but me to part him, wrap you up on that plow line and bring it here. I'm awful glad that he did. <laughs> I, I, I reckon I am too. You want to kiss me again? You bet I do. Mm. <laughs> How come they call you darling Jill? Well, my name's Jill. grits on the table. Some wood, Ty Ty. Where's Dawn Jill? She's right here a minute. Like what? Well, like one thing, I don't know. And another thing, maybe they just took off to another county and got mad. Now you got me really worried. 
That Don Jill's crazy enough to do anything. Don Jill! Don Jill, come home! Stop us waiting! I'm waiting! Tata! Tata, help! Where are you? I'm down in the hole. Which hole are you in? This bad deep one. You got me, Tata. I got you, Pluto. Come on. Oh. Come on, boy. Tata, Come on. why must you make this hole so deep? Don't you? Find him? Well, did you? Well, you know, Pluto, in this pale moonlight, I can't see a thing. Seems to me like these boys would have more sense than to let Ty Ty egg him in and dig an empty holes in the ground. You got nothing but a lousy lint head. Yeah, a lousy lint head. There ain't no more gold in that ground than there is in the toes of my socks. Get your boys wise up and go to Atlanta, Augusta somewhere, and get yourself a job to pay something Saturday night. Why don't you soak your head in a gin bottle? Soak your head in some gin bottle. Now stop it, Buck. You too, Will. Why don't you go back where you come from, lint head? Yeah, go back where you come from, you lint head. I'll go back when I'm good and ready. Why don't you try and make me go? We'll make you. We'll make you. We're gonna make you. Let him come on. Where you that shovel box? Make me. Yeah, we'll make you. Tata! Drop that shovel box! Come on! You do so! Come on, you lousy little head! Come on! All you lousy farm boys think you're tough, huh? I'll carry you. Two got to fight about. Told you there was going to be plenty of gold for all of us. Uh, Paul, he wasn't fighting about the gold. So the way he acts and talks like he's better than we are. Every time he comes over here, Paul, he, that lit hit there invites a beating. Boys, it's a shame we can't keep a peaceful family. That's what I've been aiming all my life to have. And if I can't have it, I swear I'm going to leave that gold where it is and go back to grubbing cotton. And you tell him to stop tomcatting around my wife. Is Ellie in this? I didn't say a word about her. No, he don't say nothing. He just looks. And that's plenty. Looks don't hurt anybody, Buck. He's getting ready to start something. I know that much. You bet I am. Is Ellie, you get in the house. Now, Buck, that's just your imagination. Well, ain't after Griselda. I you will. 
I ain't made up my mind about that yet. I'll kill him. I'll kill him. I'll kill him. I'll... You're gonna kill nobody. Not on my land or any place else. Now you get up on the ground and cool off. Get all heated up down this hole and take fresh air to get it out of you. Now go on. Go on up the house. Go on, Shaw. Go on, Buck. Get it. Tell him to go home. Yeah, poor, tell him to go home. That buck's right, I ought to go home. I hope you don't mean that, Will. Now I've found the right spot, I'm gonna need all the help I can get. The right spot? The house is gonna topple right into this hole if you dig any more. I gotta go home. I gotta get that meal started. That ain't what you're thinking about. You're thinking about Griselda. It ain't no sin to think. Well, you're gonna kill yourself if you go on that way. I couldn't sleep either. We did the right thing. Busting up. I guess so. Oh, no, don't come any closer. I just want to touch it, Griselda. Just feel the touch of you. It won't stop there. I just know it won't.
Dave. Are you sure you divine the gold in just the right place? Well, you, you saw the will point down, didn't you? That's right. Willa don't lie. Why should he? Pure scientific. Mr. Tai Tai, you ought to be out raising cotton. You're a good farmer. That is, you used to be. But Mr. Tai Tai, you can raise more cotton on this land in one season than you can find gold in a whole lifetime. It's a waste of everything, Mr. Tai Tai, digging them holes all over the place. Well, now, I wish I had spent a little more time on the cotton, for sure. If I had 20 or 30 bales to tide me over the fall and winter, I could devote all the rest of my time to digging. But, Mr. Tai Tai, where are we going to get enough grub to carry us through another winter? We use my credit, like I did last winter. The store man says you ain't got enough credit left to grease the end of your nose. Felix, I'm sorry about that, but there's nothing I can do. I just got to go on digging. I got the fever. You can't stop the fever. Well, Mr. Tai Tai, if it's as bad as all that, why don't you go up to Augusta and borrow some money from your son, Jim Leslie? Oh, there wouldn't be no sense in that. Why not, Mr. Tai Tai? I hear tell he's rich. Anyhow, I ain't never heard of a cotton broker this poll. All the same, he wouldn't help me none, Felix. My son, Jim Leslie, won't speak to me on the street. And if he won't speak to me on the street, I know darn well he won't lend me money. You're his pappy, ain't you, Mr. Tai Tai? I reckon so. Jim Leslie ain't been a bad man. He ain't been a good one. In fact, he's practically a stranger. And that's wrong. I ought to go see him just to keep the family ties together. But I can't, Felix. But Mr. Tai Tai, you just got to get some money real quick. Or else, how are you going to keep us all on the farm? Why, we'll all have to go someplace else to work to make a living. Felix? Yes, Mr. Tai Tai? I just got a wonderful idea. I'm gonna call on Jim Leslie. You know, he's my son. He's a rich man. He's a cotton broker. And no son of mine's gonna stand by and let his kid go hungry. Felix, now you watch good over day. You I, hear me? I hear you, Mr. Tai Tai. What are you doing? Oh, now, now you don't reckon I'm going to run away from here. I've never been so happy in all my born days. Now, son, you get up from there and get going. Hey, well, I don't have to do what you say. It ain't me that's talking, boy. It's this gun. Now, you get up and get going. And head straight for your home. Back to the swamp. Hey. You know what? You ain't going to shoot me, are you now? I ain't going to shoot nobody, son. But this gun might. I don't want to go. I'm sorry, son, but you got to go. It's the only way I know how to save this one. Now, you get going.
outside. You know, I'd turn throats out now before I tell them what we're after. <laughs> but did you ever see such pretty things in all your life? Don't touch anything. Style, all right. Now, I'm mighty proud of the way my boys made his way in the world. them new Coca-Cola signs are putting on a highway coming into Georgia. Oh, brother, the time and patience it must have took to do that. Look at those leaves on the trees. Almost like real. You know, I don't know. We need a picture for you. Spend a half dollar in gasoline and drive into the woods and see the real thing, that doesn't you? Son. What are you doing here? Well, now, son, you... You know you're pleased to see us. <laughs> Don't put on that you're not. Funny I didn't hear any doorbell. We don't ring no bells in my family. We just walk in. That's, that's the way we do it in my family. We're never going to do any different. Nobody has to knock on my door. Ring no fancy bells to get in the house. Well, what did he come here for? Well, it's, uh, it's important, son. Money, I suppose. Well, why don't you dig it out of the ground? Is that a nice way to, to talk to your only dad? Well, that's what you came here for, isn't it? Money. Well, isn't it? Not at all. I... Oh, all I need is the wherewithal to, to buy feed and seed for my sharecroppers. So that I can dig down another 20 feet and locate my grandpa's gold. Well, there's no gold there. You know that. You know it as well as I do. You ought to. You've been digging for 15 years. You'll be digging holes on the day you die. There's the money. Now, take it and go on home. Something got into you, Jim Leslie. At an early age. You're different from the rest of us. I don't know why. You act like you're ashamed of me. Well, I don't see how that can be, because I'm your father. Well, you take on like, like you don't know who I am or where you're from. Well, I'm sorry for you, son. You married a widow. 
Not because you loved her, just had to have her. Not because you got caught with the bases loaded by her pa. No, you got married just to get you a house and a fortune. Well, your wife's dead now. And all you got left is a house full of breakable dishes. <laughs> Well, son, I guess we better be going. <coughs> pa, why don't you fix yourself a drink? I don't take a drink, son. <laughs> well, there's some fresh fruit in the dining room. Why don't you go on and help yourself? I don't mind if I do. Well, you too, darling, Jill, Griselda. Go on in. That's the dining room way down there? That's right, Pa, right down there. I'm hungry. Griselda, sometime in you in town, come up to see me. It's my office number. I want you to call me. I wouldn't do that. Well, why not? Because it isn't right, that's why. I'm going to be looking for you just the same, Griselda. You're going to come up and see me. No, I'm not. I bet that's your only pair of shoes. You come up and see Jim Leslie, he'll buy you the whole shoe store. If you don't come see me, I'm going to come out there and get you here. I'm going to come out to that pig belly farm and bring you right back to this house. You don't love Buck. If you did, you'd have four kids by now. Now, what are you would pulling and pawing it, Griselda? has got to stop. I apologize for Jim Leslie, Griselda. My family ain't known for their politeness to women. They're headstrong that way. Come on. I'll be coming out there and get you one of these days, Griselda. Thanks for the money, son. Consider it a loan. Did you get it, Pa? Did you get it? Uh, I reckon I did. Just look at this big wad of greenbacks. Hey, Pa, you know what I'd like to get now? I'd like to get me a... I'd like to get me a raincoat. What for? Well, it's fixing the rain, Pa. Well, it can't rain now. I don't want it to rain yet a while. I got digging that hole, and I can't dig underwater any too well. Yeah, but, Pa, suppose it does rain. I'd like to put me on a raincoat and wear it. if it starts to rain, you just peel off your clothes and let your skin take care of the rest. God never made a finer raincoat in a man's skin, anyhow. Let's go. Ty, Ty, I, I'm kind of thirsty. Maybe we can stop in town and get a quick beer? Well, I don't think it'd be showing the proper respect for Jim Leslie's money to spend it in a saloon. Just one beer, Pa. Oh, one beer, Pa? I've never been to a saloon in my life, and I ain't gonna start now. Well, I'm waiting in the car, Pa.
Come on. Come on. Now, you get the others and get this car rolling. We're in the street of sin and shame. Oh, now go on up there, Pa, and come back and tell us about it. Now, darling, you, you do what I told you. You girls stop teasing. Go fetch the boys out of that saloon. Hey, Grandpa. Come on, back your drink. <laughs> come on, Grandpa. Oh, I know what's wrong with you. You're bashful. Oh, you on. leave me be, woman. Griselda, get me out of there. Hey, hey, leave her, Pa, alone. Your pa? Well, who'd you think it was? <laughs> well, now, what do you mean honking your horn under my window? Well, I apologize, ma'am, but I was only trying to get my family out of that saloon. Well, you made me come all the way down here for nothing. I'll hoodoo you, you tight-fisted miser. <laughs> in our own backyard. Oh. By all my health and long life, it's just plain well water. Now you get Will and Rosamond, and we'll be on our way. Now you... Hey, Will! Will Thompson! Hey, Rosamond! Come on, Will! Rosamond, come on! Give me the power! I'll turn on the power! Give me the everlasting light of life! The power! Hi, you beautiful girl. Now, wait a minute. You keep your hands off or you lean head. I'll kiss my oh, girl you. all I want. You will. Oh, keep your hands off. Go all away head. from me. I'm sorry I had to do that, son of a... Rosman, you and Will have to go back to Peachtree Valley. I don't seem to be able to keep my family together. Oh, there you are, Don Jill. Have a look at all you folks. Uncle Felix told me you went to Jim Leslie's house, and I went there, I seen Jim Leslie. He said, go to the first bar, I come to, and you'd be there drinking up his money, whatever you mean. I like this Jim Leslie fella. I got his vote. Oh, you everlasting horsehead. Jim Leslie don't even live in the right county to make his vote count. Is that a fact? Pluto, I couldn't be happier to see you. Is that a fact? Yeah, you come at just about the right time. I did? You and Don and Jill are going to drive Will and Rosamond back to Peachtree Valley. Oh, no, not again. <laughs> come on, honey, waffle. Come on, Will. Let's be up and do it. Ty, Ty, I'm going to pull a switch and light up the whole world tonight. Yes, Will, yes, you can do it, honey. Everything's going to be all right. No, you ask me like I'm a baby. No, I'm not, honey. I'm going to pull Will, a switch Will, and light up the whole now, honey. world. Honey, leave me alone. I'm going to pull a switch and light up the whole world, Ty, Ty. I'm telling you. Oh, I'm afraid to go back home. Will's not his chef. He's never been this wild. He's gonna do something, I know it. For six months now, I've just been living from day to day, hoping that tomorrow would change him. But I, I gotta have help now. I can't do it alone. Griselda, you're the only one he might listen to. Oh, well, Rosamond, honey. Now, Griselda, she can't go, honey. Oh, oh, please. Please make Griselda listen to me. My heart aches for you, daughter, but Griselda has to make up her own mind. Don't, don't ask him. Who can I ask? He hates Will. You hate him, too? No. 
You know I do. You love him. Same as I do. That's why you got to help him, Griselda. Please, I'm begging you. Please, please. All right, I'll, I'll go with you till he sobers up. Thank you, Griselda. Thank you. Still sleeping, thank goodness. Here it is, Doc. I wasted another day. Haven't counted a single vote. I've got to be getting home. Sorry, this ice cream getting too cold to eat. Wait just a little while longer, till he wakes up. He's mighty fond of peach ice cream. I've got to go too, Rose. My buck's going to be wild. Oh, stay a while. I don't want to be here alone with him. Are you scared of Will? Your own husband? I reckon I am. The way he's been acting lately. Waited till I woke up, didn't you? Yes, Will. Turning on the power tonight. Will, wouldn't you like some peach ice cream? You never worked in the cotton mill, did you, Pluto? No, sir. I've got to be getting home. I've got to get elected. It's mighty important, Will. You know what it's like in a company town when there's no work? No, sir. Well, I'll tell you. You ever shoot a rabbit and go and pick him up? And when you lifted him up in your hand, felt his heart pounding like... like... I don't know what. Have you? Well, I have. I have. Will, where are you going? Turn the power. Oh, no. No. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. What you gonna do? I'm gonna break open the gates and turn on the power. You mustn't do this, Will. You're gonna get in trouble. I'm gonna open the mill. I promised the whole valley. You can't do this alone. You're gonna get killed. Do you care? Of course I care. I would have waited for you, Will. If you only asked me, I would have waited for you all my life. I would have waited. All my life is now. Don't shut me out, Griselda. I won't shut you out. I won't shut you out.
since we've seen the inside of these mills. There's nothing here anymore, Will. It's all here, the same as the day I left. Waste. Nothing but waste. Griselda and the powers on the valley homes. There's meat and potatoes on every table. People that remember funny things to laugh at. When the power's off, the valley's dead. You see what I mean, Griselda? You see why... why... I got to turn on the power? I've been talking about it too long. It takes a man to turn on the power, not just a talker. Just looking at you makes me feel like a man again. How can I help you, Will? Look at me. Just keep looking at me. Will, no. You sound like Rosalind. We both love you, Will. Then help me, Griselda. If I don't do it now, I'll never do it. I'll do anything you want, Will, only let's get out of here. I've never been this close before. Don't think about it, Will. Think of me. I'm not going without you.
need everybody a nice cool glass of water, you hear? Why don't you just sit in the porch and rest a little? What's the matter with you? Nothing. Act as if they just buried your husband instead of that lint head. Oh, please, Buck. Please what? Don't want me to talk about it, huh? Talk. Nothing to talk about. Anyway, you ought to have some regard for Rosamond. What you care about Rosamond? Why did you have to chase after him? Grizel and me have to cook dinner. No one's eaten in this house till I get an answer from her. I asked you a question. Can't you talk? Sure, I can talk. But this isn't the time for it. It's a shame you can't kill a man but once. Otherwise, I'd be gunning for him right now. I don't like to kill him myself. <laughs> now, what you do? You ought to be ashamed of yourself, Buck. You shut up. You don't look ashamed for anything. You're both alike. A pair of loose fillies. If you ain't man enough to hold on to your wife, I'd be ashamed to admit it. I'd just go hide my face someplace. Why don't you what stay out of family? Buck, drop him! Oh, Will is dead! Ain't that enough punishment? We're going on like this all the time. And we're getting further and further away from the happy life. Hey, Paul. Well, I have no water here, Paul. All of us ought to sit down and think a little about living and how to do it. God didn't put us here. To Scrap and fight each other all the time. I don't want to hear no more about God. We don't have a little more love for each other. There's going to be a real sorrow in your heart, son. I've tried all my life to keep a peaceful family under my roof. If you just stop fighting, learn to smile and laugh just a little. You talk like an old fool. Maybe it sounds that way to you. But you got the feeling of God in your heart. You just can't fight. God, 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 what did God ever do for you? I don't feel exactly the way Buck does, but we ain't got a penny out of God's little lake of here. You boys don't seem to catch on. It's not important that I get money out of God's little lake. In fact, I can walk on it and stand on it and feel God is there. What's all this got to do with me and Griselda? Well, you boys seem to think about it. The things you can see and touch. Well, that ain't living. It's the things you feel down inside you. That's what living's for. And if you felt more how Griselda feels inside her, no other man could touch her. That's just what I was getting at before you shut your fool mouth off. What went on between you and before he died? How's it gonna make you feel any better to ever tell you that? I wanna hear from her. I got a right to that, haven't I? I'm not afraid to tell him, Paul. No, don't tell him anything. You stay out of there. <laughs> if I was you, when I went to bed tonight, I'd get down on my knees in the dark and try talking to God a little. He can tell you things nobody else can. And maybe he'll tell you how you ought to act with Griselda. He'd tell you if you only take the time and trouble to listen. But if there's anything in the world he's crazy about, it's seeing a man and woman in love with each other. And to forgive is part of loving. When he sees that, he knows the world is running along as slick as grease. Buck will come along all right when he gets a little older. You just try and be patient with him till he lives a little longer. Seems to take some people almost a lifetime to learn some things. And Buck is real young. 
I'm afraid he'll never learn, Pa. What's there to learn? Will wasn't any bigger than I am. He wasn't any strong either. I could throw him any morning before breakfast. It wasn't the way he looked that made him different, Buck. It was the way he was made inside. He could feel things. And you can't. You can't suck me in with that kind of talk. I want to know what you and Will did behind my back. Pluto, you were there. What happened? Nothing much. What do you mean by nothing much? Nothing much just means nothing much, that's all. Did you go deaf, dumb, and blind the day you went to Peachtree Valley? Well, listen, Buck, I was in that house the whole time we're there. I didn't see nothing more exciting than coffee and cake and peach ice cream. Then that siren blew, and we all knew that Will was dead. That's a fact. Now that's settled. Let's go in and get some supper. Come on, Rosamond. We'll all get a good night's rest, and tomorrow things will look a lot different. Well, I'm going back to Augusta. Careful, Lifka, Zelda. I got a big empty house. Oh, plenty of room for you too, Rosamond. Now look here, son. You're welcome to stay for supper, but. If you're so all fired and getting back to Augusta, you go on. Don't be tempting the girls. They're staying here. You know, it looks like all of you'd learn your lesson by now. All you raised on this land is piles of dirt and empty holes. I aim to strike a load soon. You've been saying the same thing for years. Age didn't bring you any more sense. I got sense you don't know about, son. I hate the smell of this place. I hated it since the day I was born. You can come live with me in Augusta, Griselda. You can have some new clothes, a new car, plenty of spending money. Get in the house, Griselda. You can come live with me. Hey, get Lady Hands off her! I'm coming out of here! Wait a minute! Ah! Jim Leslie. And go back to Augusta where you belong. If you ever show your face here again, son of mine or no son of mine.
Fine, Rose. Down, down. Griselda. We'll go in the house. Get some supper. Have a good night's sleep. Maybe tomorrow will be a good day. the land smooth. You spared my sons. I'd never dig another hole again. Except to, to plant seeds for things to grow. Horse head of a sheriff's wife to be. <laughs> you planting well, Shaw? Yeah. Well, I'm planting. <laughs> oh. What have we got for dinner, honey? Same as yesterday, Buck. Bacon, fat, and grits. I don't care. I just want to be waited on by a beautiful woman. Oh! Hold it! Oh! Here. What's the matter, Mr. Tai Tai? Well, I struck something. Me ain't it hard. Well, it ain't nothing but a rock, Mr. Tai Tai. Oh, it ain't. It sounded like metal. I swear it did. What'd you find? Oh. Well, I can feel it. I didn't feel it. Give me room. Oh, well, it's nothing but an old shovel, Mr. Tai Tai. Oh, just look at this shovel. I bet you it's a hundred years old. I bet you my grandpa used this shovel to bury the gold. It's a sign from the Lord. Mr. Tai Tai, if we're gonna have a crop this year, we got a whole lot more plowing to do yet. I don't reckon there'd be much time lost if I just took this day to give my grandpa one more chance, huh, Griselda? Come on, mule. Now I told you about God's little acre. Very well, very well. Now I told you about God's little acre. Very well, very well.
today. It's the American way. Of course, the next best thing to a seat in a stand is the seat in front of a 19-inch RCA Victor television. One more day to Labor Day weekend. The traditional occasion for tasty outdoor barbecues.